Okay, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to our meeting for the uh, Citrus County Aviation Advisory Board. Uh, calling it to order, and uh, we'll begin with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could call the roll. Okay. Today in attendance, we have Carl Flanagan. Present. Mark Klingel. Here. George McDonald. Here. Keith Pullius. Here. Charles Carr. Here. Absent, we have Heiko Kallenbaugh and Louise Michaels. Okay, thank you very much. Um, our next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Um, I have some comment, uh, but I'll, would anyone else, does anyone else have any comment on the, the uh, minutes? The only thing I really saw technically, and I don't know if it makes much of a difference under staff reports, um, Quincy was not here last meeting. Probably so, should note that, yeah. Um, he said it was, it was reported by, by Quincy, obviously. Oh, okay. Yep, that's the only thing I really noticed. Okay, and then uh, my only comment is um, under uh, open to the public, we had some discussion about leases, and um, those minutes are accurate. The only thing I would like to add to that is um, we had discussion over how the leases were determined the CPI. by the CPI, and we had some discussion as to whether or not the CPI index was used was correct for the county and so on, something like that. Okay. So we have uh, two uh, minor uh, uh, corrections or amendments to the minutes. Anybody else have any comments? No, I had that same one. Okay, very good. All right, well, then I'll uh, like a motion to accept the minutes. I'll make a motion. Second, anyone? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So we'll move on to what's next. Uh, at this time, we're open. The meeting is open to the public for anyone that would like to speak and um, address anything uh, that's not otherwise on the agenda. Goody, anything? Okay. <laughs> okay. And I guess we'll be hearing from you guys in due course. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, moving on to new business. Um, we have nothing to note at, uh, at the present time, so uh, we'll switch over to uh, old business, and I'll turn it over to you, sir. Okay. All right, good afternoon. Uh, Crystal River Runway 927 GPS approaches. <clears throat> FAA is requiring an AGS, uh, AGIS survey. Um, they are going to fund it, and we have consultants working on um, a scope of work at, as we speak. Okay. Next, um, Crystal River Runway 1836, displaced threshold. All obstructions have been removed from the FAA database. That's the most current information I have. Okay, once all the obstructions are removed, how long does it take for them to undisplace it? Do you have any idea? I can't put a time frame on that, but I can ask the question. Okay. Could I ask a question? Of course. Can, can you come to the podium? How much was it displaced? I don't have that number on, on me at this time, but I can find out. I, I will. Okay. As soon as I find out, I'll let you know. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. I got one question. Of course. Um, what's the AGIS survey? Airport's Geographical Information System. <clears throat> okay. And has that not been ongoing? Um, now they want us to take pictures, um, and they want it to be more up to date. I guess they're, I guess, um, from what I was told, they're um, being a more strict about it. So uh, some airports were waiting on this really had if, if this was going to have to happen for for other airports, but okay. FAA finally said yes. Okay, we're, just, we're a part of that. All right. Um. Just a question about the survey itself. Is it um, they're actually locating trees by latitude and longitude or something? And 
from my understanding, yeah, like a, like a like a normal like survey, okay, and just pinpointing where any obstructions are at. Okay, I think they have a new database, and I well I can't speak for them, but oh, okay, all right, that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, very well, and then next. Uh, groundbreaking. Uh, thanks to all who showed up. Um, things are moving forward. Um, they are definitely um, excavating the land for sure. Um, we're also uh, the nine million grant with Florida Commerce. Um, we got that going with we'll scope of work and the uh, grant agreement. Um, all of that came in yesterday and today. So moving forward with that, um, that phase two of the of the uh, taxiway. Okay, very business good. park. Mm -hmm. um, fire station? Fire station. Uh, so the 2024, uh, 2027, that's going to be budget, design, and construction build. So I got that from the fire chief a couple days ago. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Um, Hot off the press. Indeed. Um Airport equipment repair and replacement schedule. I haven't forgot about it, but it is on my radar. Um, uh, more to follow with that. I know right now INF has had some hiccups with their runway lights and taxiway lighting. Okay. I've had uh, a few guys out there um, trying to figure out what's going on. I think well, there's a motherboard that I think killed all the lights. Oh. Probably. But we don't know what the cause is yet, uh, but getting more information as that comes in. Okay. Yeah. And their A wasp too had a a large amount of wasps inside of it. So <laughs> there's a reason why it wasn't working or is intermittently working. Oh wow. That should have been taken care of. So better than rodents, I guess. Yeah, that is true. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, financial analysis and business planning study. Uh, the work authorization was approved. Uh, the um, purchase order is in progress. And um, we have a kickoff meeting uh, scheduled for next week, I believe. Okay. Um, more to follow with that. Okay. And, yeah. and uh, what uh, consultant, I presume, is doing that? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Who's that? Uh, ICE, infrastructure. Uh, I don't have their. Okay. Can't remember their acronym. Okay. I presume they're an airport. Part of their expertise, analysis. yes. Okay. Oh, okay. And then our most entertaining topic, FAA Special Agent Charles Simpson. Any more news or communication from, from yes. the gentleman? Um, he's been out of the country for the past few weeks, um, but I've been able to get in touch with him um, every once in a while, kind of filling me in on things. Uh, he is following, the, the FAA is following this um, Presuming you want to talk about or Mr. Freddy, yeah, that but. remains a, uh, the, 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 the idea of having a um, unlicensed, unmedically certified mm -hmm. scofflaw pilot operating out of our airports in the middle of the night mm -hmm. is deeply troubling. And um, mm -hmm. um, I mean, at, at this point, all we can do is kind of as a, as a group is kind of advise express our concern that we haven't you know reached a and, and then kind of watch the process play out with the FAA and and, and so forth I mean the only thing that what's come out of this group is um, um, there needs to be um, education and coordination between the FAA and local sheriffs and police departments so they understand what they they can do and have to do or are mm -hmm. obligated to do and I think the next if I remember correctly the next big step in that process was to uh, for have a special agent Charles Simpson to come down and, and meet with our sheriff and uh, um, and any of his people that need to be involved and then kind of explain the situation and then get them up to speed on what they need to do to um, um, to address this and then if there's certain things that need to happen on the community side of it like we need to be putting in surveillance cameras or something at Inverness or whatnot. I don't know, but um, I'd kind of like to see that move along. I don't know about you guys, but I'd kind of like to see that that, that that process move along so we can, you know, if he goes down in the middle of the night, you know, in our neighborhood or something, 
it, it's gonna it's not gonna look good on the county if we've been, <laughs> we've been aware of it for like six months a year so um, after thinking about it a little bit um, and reading uh, the emails that, uh, that mm -hmm. you guys sent out uh, it, a possible scenario there is um, uh, he may be incorrectly operating under a foreign uh, pilot's license uh, because if he um, applied for a U.S. private license based on his foreign license, uh, he would have been issued a license that's one step down from his, his, uh, his uh, foreign license. Uh, he's still not legal. Uh, he's still uh, operating an unregistered airplane uh, without a U.S. license. Uh, and so uh, that might be a possible scenario that might explain how he got 5,000 hours. Uh, well, if he that does. may be a work of fiction. <laughs> if, if he does. But that, yeah. that's a possible scenario that, that, that uh, uh, he could be operating under the false impression that it's that he's not doing anything illegal. Hmm. Possible. Yeah, possible. Well, I'm just throwing out another possible scenario. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, this person's been uh, on the FAA's radar for quite some time, and they've got a, a lengthy uh, records. Um, yeah, um, well, this is what this is what I can answer for you. Yeah, okay. Is, uh, I did talk with Special Agent Charles Simpson, um, delightful guy, and <clears throat> he's um, coordinated with the Sheriff's Department that a training on the 30th of August oh, at 9 o'clock. Okay, hey. perfect. All That's right. That's what I was going to ask next. But he f failed to tell me the location. And, of course, I'm trying to get in touch with him, and he's in, in a location that's not the United States right now. So um, I believe it's over there at the um, at EOC, but I could be wrong. I don't want to, probably shouldn't have said anything, but the more I find out about it, I'll let you guys know. And then right after that beginning training is going to be a hands-on at Crystal River. Now this is supposed to be for the Sheriff's Department, but I also told them before all this that we would like, you know, concerned citizens or our, our Aviation Advisory Board be able to, to just go up and he said, that's fine. Okay. So... Do we have an idea as to an, an end number that he's regularly using or set of end numbers that he's Actually, regularly using? Actually, he, he's flying under ADSB out, and um, you can track him on flight aware. It's in yep. one of those emails you sent. Yeah. Us. Was it? Okay. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll dig for it because I mean it's. The thing is, is that he's simple to. He's going. To, he, it's tactful. You know, he's going to sleepy GA airports mm -hmm. and just. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. Ohio to the he's going all over mm -hmm. and I can't remember the last time he stopped in the INF um, not too long ago uh, end of July if I remember okay yeah so it's just it's just tough to catch him and that's what FA needs to do they need to catch him while he's piloting he's got to be sitting down hands and feet on controls for them to be able to and they so they're monitoring that yeah, I understand your, uh, one of the concerns about, well, he's got hangers here and he does have a lease, one hanger, he has two. One hanger's lease uh, is up in October mm -hmm. and we're trying to figure out a tactful way to address this because the last thing that I want to do is interrupt DFA's investigation because if we throw a flag on his, his, um, his hanger, right. could that you know, sniff something yeah, out and yeah, kind of right. break out. I don't want to mess with him. I'm just trying to get in touch with him, and it's been a little tough because yeah, okay. he's not here. But once he gets here, try to get more communication going. Yeah, I think you got to leave it to the FAA to, to deal with it. Uh, he's not violating any state or county laws. Yeah. Yeah. He's got two hangers. Yes, and he's asking for a third. Hmm. He's got three planes, maybe? <laughs> the county has the right to go in, in the hangars at any time, if I remember right. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. It is a courtesy to let them know. Right. But we do have that right. Okay. 
All right. Well, uh, well, that's basically you told me what I wanted to hear was that yeah, the, the training session's coming up, and then um, maybe out of that, you know, there's there's something more we need to do um, to help them. Um, yeah, I'd like to uh, like to be uh, like to be part of that as far as uh, you know. It's like, well, how do you catch a guy that's flying out of an airport in the middle of the night? Nobody's around. Well, you need a surveillance camera pointed at his three hangers. Um, that sends an alarm off somewhere. I don't know. Um, that's uh, that's something for Special Agent Charles Simpson to kind of advise us. But um, I just remain concerned. I'm very concerned about this. Um, you know, um, he doesn't uh, think he needs a license or a medical certificate. Um, you wonder what he's what, is, what the status of his airplanes are and how airworthy they are. And what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of questions. Okay. That's the most concerning part. It's not going to be any good. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. It's an RV-12, isn't it? One of them, yeah, well, apparently one of them is an RV-12. What's in the other two hangars I'm really curious about now. But uh, yeah. that, that would give us more end numbers to, tra- to, tra- to that we can... He apparently doesn't turn ADSB off. He leaves it on, which is interesting. So... Um, it leads me to believe he may not understand he's violating the law. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's. Mm. You know, if I I'll was, give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for that information. Well, uh, and any further discussion on that, folks? No, I just wanted to, to uh, again, just ask a question. Of, I know that uh, from Emirates Airport, uh, as far as the security goes, that mm-hmm. they were going to be a part of a meeting with the sheriff's office, and I thought uh, Agent Simpson, I don't know. Would that be taking place all at the same time, or would that, or is there a separate meeting, George, that that you're a part of? That's the yeah. Place? Annually, um, there is a, an airport security meeting that's supposed to occur between sheriff's office, FBO operator, and then maybe a representative of me from from this uh, from this board. That hasn't happened this year, but I think um, when they they have the training on the thirtieth. Um, if we could make sure we have Crystal River, obviously you probably know about it, um, invited, but also uh, Andy from, um, you know, from uh, um, Wright Runner uh, there as well. Okay. So um, that might suffice and also take care of our um, annual security um, meeting obligation. Okay. If there's no further discussion, we'll move on. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hangers. No vacancies. Okay. Um, Board of County Commissioner okay. updates. Oh, yeah. sorry. Just to add, so no vacancies are. Uh, what's the demand look like? Um, do we know? Do we have lists? We. Oh yeah, we do have waiting lists. Uh, for both airports, for sure. Um, I don't know the exact number at the time because sometimes people just get passed over and either get kicked off. Um, I think it's around 14. Okay. Right. Yeah. It just as, as a matter of, excuse me, Chair, if, if it's possible to, while you're showing no vacancy, but if you could also let uh, the advisory board know what the demand looks like. each. Oh, day. sure. Yeah, I can okay. add that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. It is. Um, Board of County Commissioner updates. <clears throat> Godfrey Lane power, ball, uh, power line ball markers. Uh, that's going to be on the 1010 agenda. And um, with the county, county commission? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> And on Tuesday, um, Wright Rudder's uh, presentation to the board resulted in a two-year agreement, which is being drafted um, as we speak. Excellent. Those guys are doing great things out there. I'm happy to see them can stay on. Um, uh, Project status reports. Project status reports. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I make a comment on, on something that we said a while oh, back sure, about a, um, 
airport equipment repair and maintenance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a note here that um, the bill money, the bipartisan infrastructure law, will pay for both AWOS. Our AWOS is right now, are, I think, over 15 years old, mm -hmm. and they're getting pretty close to their, if they're not already expired, end of life. Um, we do have a contractor um, who can perform the work, and uh, we're looking into that. Okay. There was some discussion, I know one of the previous meetings, as far as those AWOS would go, is that, yeah, they're, they're old, and maybe they can be fixed, but, you know, they're sort of like, sort of like repairing old aviation equipment again at a certain point it becomes impractical yeah. or um, parts are hard to find or yes things things of that nature and I think we had some discussion about um, what it would cost to replace them with new units did, did, um, and I remember it was expensive it wasn't cheap correct yeah. um, it's about twenty thousand dollars in that ballpark fifteen twenty thousand I believe is to the replace them or to repair replace and you right now, was? I thought there was about one hundred ten thousand dollars. That's the number I remember. Or no, maybe that's yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. It's between one hundred and one hundred and twenty is what I looked up, and then uh, when we came through, Quincy had mentioned that that he had gotten a bill because it was mentioned by uh, that they thought it was going to be like three hundred thousand dollars, and I said you got all the mounts and everything else, and when they got the point, it yeah. back to about one hundred and ten, one hundred twenty-two, or something like this, that he came up with somewhere between that amount. Uh, for each one of them. Uh, yeah, it sounds very good for me when I, when I first got here. So, I'm sure yeah. It um. Yes, but I, um, our bill money should be able to cover this from what I'm from what my research is telling me. So, that's a good thing. Um, and we do have a gentleman who's a contractor that can do the work as well. So, um, more to follow with that. I okay. just forgot to mention. Okay, appreciate that. Yeah, and I'll make sure I get more accurate numbers too. I was going to say if if, if we have a grant coming in from the um, Infrastructure Act uh -huh. that would pay for new units and mm -hmm. might behoove us to do that as opposed to fixing ones there. Yeah, yeah. it is. Start I mean it's, it's starting to become more frequent and right costly. Things add up. I think it's time. Okay, well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. You're welcome. Uh, back to project status reports. Runway extension at Crystal River. The EA is underway. RFQ is due today. Actually, it's due at 2 o'clock. So um, we have uh, three people that are going to be evaluating those, uh, those um, after this. Oh, the RFQ is for the uh, – I lost track of what that one's right, for. Uh, uh, it's for qualification. For? For, for, the, um, for the EA. Oh, for the oh to do yep. the environmental assessment. Yep. Okay, gotcha. When do you expect that to uh, be put into contract to actually start the work? Three months, four months. And how long do you expect that to take? The construction. An EA? No, not just, not just the EA. Not for the environmental uh, assessment. Three months for the environmental assessment. I'm looking at the whole extension issue. Oh no, three, that's three or four months just the process that, to get. Yeah, that's. But a construction itself, I don't have a scope of work, or um, I don't have like a, a timeline on how long. Can we get that? Sure. I mean, we we really, if everyone's going to talk about uh, extension of the runway, we need to have an idea how when it's supposed to be done because that's going to affect other. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, other issues. Goody, please. Yeah. Extension of completion was earmarked for 2027. Correct. 2027. Yeah. I don't so have my CFP all these, these tests have to be done. No, for, I understand. Yeah, yeah, but that's uh, the date. But you're you're asking the work itself. Is yes. it going to be six months, a year, or whatever? Yeah, I'll, I'll give a, a progress, progress report of some type, uh, just to... So we can see it's not going to be all right. It's scheduled to be done by 27, or is it going to be done 29 because yeah. it's been delayed? Uh, and I have the same issue with the uh, Inverness uh, Industrial Park. Okay. Oh, we'll get to that momentarily. Yeah. So, are you, are you looking for like a, a monthly or a quarterly update? Yes, please. When the work starts. When it, yeah, when it starts and when, it, when it's scheduled to start. Oh, you'll know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, like, oh, we'll just get to the 
<laughs> There's a spark in a minute. <laughs> okay. I was going to say may, maybe it might be helpful because um, uh, the major hurdle was your all success in in um, uh, in, in, the, in the legislator allocating funding to to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but it might be helpful for everyone to understand what the process is from here on out. First, you know, the environmental assessment has to be done because um, that sort of sets the stage for what can be done with the site. Mm -hmm. And then, um, or what has to be done in order to use the site. And then, then you have to hire a design consultant. I'm not sure that's been done. Um, then after design and permitting, then we finally get to construction and, um, you know, that's um, um, three years from now. That it almost sounds a little ambitious, but I sure hope it hope it works out that way. Just go, just go through the go through the process. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, RFQ is due today, so should be okay. finding out the results at two fifteen. What time is it now? Two twenty five. So sometime today, if not okay. early tomorrow, be looking at that and evaluating um, that process. And okay. Then, if if it's not too much trouble for next meeting, uh, perhaps. We'll set aside a, 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 uh, an agenda item under this mm -hmm. to, to just talk about the process. I have a vague idea of what's necessary, but maybe you'll be able to talk about it in a little okay. more detail and step us through what's what's got to be done when so we can. Uh, Looks like I should have brought my other packet of notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Super. All right. Um, Crystal River fuel tanks. All right, uh, fuel tank, we have the uh, mechanical drawings are in. We're waiting on the electrical side. Um, and our consultants for that is ICE as well. Okay. All right. Um, then we're on to um, Crystal River Wetlands Wildlife Study. Yes, field data is ongoing. Okay. <laughs> Um, Inverness, uh, airspace study, obstruction removal. The consultants, GAI, they're doing a public outreach study. Okay. Um, by outreach, that means they're going to individual property owners and saying, hey, we there's a tree that's, or whatever, on your property that's sticking up into the, and we'd like to know if we can trim it or knock it down. Pretty much. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, do you have a sense as to when they might be done with their work? Um, I'll have to ask. Okay. I haven't got an update from them in a, in a little bit. They've been talking to them about other things, but I'll ask. Sure, okay. All right. So then uh, let's, uh, uh, no objection, we'll continue on to uh, Inverness Business Park. Okay. Um, I think I already said it, but we're in the middle of um, excavating the land and uh, moving forward. Same, same question. You know, do we have a, uh, an idea of timeline and uh, status reports? Yes. Um, CIC uh, should be done, I think now the new date is December 7th, but it was going to be the middle of December when they were going to be done with construction, I believe. Just excavating the land and and um, is that including the infrastructure itself, or do you just mean the going of the infrastructure? Going vertical? Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm talking sewer water. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Utilities. That's, yes. Um, I don't have my my um, my timeline in front of me, but no. But that's what that's the kind of questions I'm asking. Yeah. You know, uh, where's our utilities, the roads, uh, infrastructure? That's that's you know, and when when it's uh, scheduled to be done. And when people can start uh, looking at bringing in businesses and what kind of uh, buildings we're going to be doing, uh -huh. are we going to own the buildings? Are we having them build it? Those are all questions. Yes. That, uh, uh, Understood. Um, I don't have uh, Frank here with me, but um, I'm sure he can answer a part of that when it comes to the business coming, coming in. That is a concern. Mm -hmm. uh, who is coming in, vetting them, making sure we don't you know, get people that... Uh, too many non-aviation or you know, Home Depot or anything like that. Nobody wants that. You want aviation companies. And then there is a non-aviation side as well. Um, but we'll see when that process happens. But uh, phase one with CIC, that's um, everything you just talked about is mm -hmm. part of that. Then there's a phase two for the taxiway 
um, in buildings as well. So, um, but I can get you a, a, an update on their actual schedule when they should be finishing. That's that easy. would be great. Thank yeah. you. Um, kind of related to what he what he said there, I was wondering who's taking the ball as far as trying to find tenants to move into there. I mean, uh, we're, we're we're getting things built, it's cleared, roads are going to go in, all that stuff. That's mm -hmm. and that's great. Um, but at some point, um, it switches from being an engineering project to a marketing one to to get people to actually. Not my... Not your area? No. Okay. <laughs> that would, I would imagine that'd be Frank. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And if, if you guys haven't had the chance to meet Frank, make time for it. He's sharp. Oh, yeah, he is. He's, he is sharp. Okay. All right, well, good. Um, our Inverness corporate hangar. Processing the grant from FDOT. And consultants right now are working on a scope of work. Okay. Let's go consultants or ice again. Okay. Very good. Um, we're at the point in our um, agenda where we have uh, we're open for uh, presentations. If any, I, I'm not aware of anything specifically scheduled. But I know we have some visitors from Kimley Horn. I don't know if you wanted to tell us what you're working on or um, say a few words or, or anything like that. We're certainly happy to give you the opportunity. And while he's making his way up here, just real quick, someone had a comment about the um, advisory board link on BOCC's website from last meeting. Uh -huh. That has been fixed. Oh, okay. So even though the link is on the main part of that white page, on the left is a bar. Right. It's in there. That was it. Very good, sir. Awesome. Um, just want to thank you guys for your time and uh, for uh, allowing us to speak here. Uh, we just want to get to know you guys, get to know... Uh, you know, projects you guys have, want to get a little more involved, want to get our faces in front of you, let, let you know some of the services we provide, want to see if we can uh, assist in any way in um, you know, helping you guys realize the uh, visions you guys have for, for your airport and just want to see if we can provide a lending hand and, you know, be a, be a part of it. I know in years past, Kimberly Horn was involved in, in some of the, um, I'm trying to remember if they did the, the, the master plan studies or... Um, but I know your company has been involved with the county before. Right. I yes. Know. So, so we have many different disciplines, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, we, we do have uh, different partners who, who have worked with uh, the county before. Um, uh, us especially, uh, we, we specialize in, in aviation, um, and uh, that's uh, that's the focus of our practice. But again, we are we are we are have multidisciplinary uh, practices in our firm, and um, you know if we can bring some of those along as well to, to be of any assistance, we'd, we'd love to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your name? Ed. Ed Thank Jimenez. You. Where, uh, what other airports are you all working on uh, right now? So in the, out of Tampa, um, we work a lot in, in the south, uh, southwest region. So mm -hmm. um, Concordia, obviously Tampa, um, St. Pete Clearwater. Were they, uh, were they relocated the FBO down in Pudigori? Was that, that your project? That was Michael Baker. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, we've, uh, a lot of, a lot of our work, especially our, our team in the Tampa office deals with, uh, airside um runways uh taxiways again we have the uh the services to do more than just that um but a lot of our folks has been been down there and uh and again we want to show face up here and get to know you guys as well okay very good right. thank you yeah, you bet um okay well we've somewhat uncharacteristically gone through our agenda a lot quicker than we have been for the last year or so. Uh, yes. <laughs> did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't yeah, think One I did. quick question. Sure. Do you know if the contract's been let for the consultants to uh, do the six-month trip and everything we're at? With? We, have, we have a consulting group that's supposed to be doing the uh, review of the airport and determining... Uh, Different strategies, etc. Oh, the, well, that's part of the financial study, and okay. part of that is going to be talking about our leases for sure, mm -hmm. a, um, a county-run airport versus um, enterprise, a, or, en enterprise, or, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, yeah, just contracts. I understand, but what I, my question being is: Has it all been let, and have they started, or is it uh, still in the uh, contract phase? 
to? No, they, the work, like I said, the work authorization has been approved and the purchase order is in progress if it's not already hit the streets yet, but they are moving forward. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, also, in the last meeting, we had talked about um, when we were discussing the, the CPI and the increases that have been done. Yes. Um, I had asked if we could get that information brought to the next meeting. Okay. Um, so can we can we add an agenda item to the next meeting to address that? And the we had also talked about last last month. We had talked about the uh, maintenance item. One of which brought forward was the hangar doors. Yes. Um, and we were going to kind of look into what the specific verbiage was on the lease. I actually combed through one of my uh, old leases. There's kind of a fine line there, uh, like I was talking about, where um, what is considered the responsibility of the tenant, what is considered the responsibility of the landlord. Yep. Um, and in the lease that I have, the lease that I signed, it did not specifically exclude the hydraulic mechanisms that Correct. open the door. Therefore, from a statutory standpoint, it would be the landlord. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those older hangers, or I don't know where this particular one was. I think it was Inverness, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that would that that would fall squarely upon the shoulders of the landlord unless it's specifically included. So um, if we could make it maybe another agenda item kind of to address that also because uh, the gentleman that was here last month expressing his concern, we told him that we would look into right. it and I, I think we should do our due diligence to make sure make, make some sort of definitive line in the sand and make it known to all the leaseholders like hey you know we, there's been some discussion and this is this is it based on recent discussion not just assumption so if we could yeah. if we could continue to address that um and maybe talk about that a little a little bit more in depth next month and i want to let you know that that has not fallen on deaf ears sure um that is being addressed also with this financial study good good we know that our lease is uh, for let's just our tenant lease mm -hmm. is um could be better yeah, yeah. I think for both parties, and that definitely needs to be um, um, less vague. Yeah. Yeah, where, where I'd kind of like to go with this is, uh, you know, you're doing a fantastic job of bringing this, the, 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 the statutory and the background information to, to light. Where I'd like to kind of go with this is um, maybe at the next meeting, kind of let's, let's talk about this and, and reach a conclusion. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, this board should make, a recommendation whether it be the board of county commissioners or whether it be to you all that um or or to legal that there may be um um something that's not entirely correct in the leases the way they're written they're not either consistent with florida statute or whatever mm -hmm. uh and we'd like them to investigate it and possibly amend it if if need be but that's kind of where I mean, is, I mean, as, as an advisory board, that's all we can do is offer a recommendation. But I'd like to get to the point with that that issue where we can make that recommendation. I'd like to try to do that at next or next meeting if we. And can. And I, I believe it'll be simple because based on my understanding of it, uh -huh. prior staff was just more making an interpretation then uh, you know Before it could my be, time, but yeah. yeah so uh, so th that's all i'm uh, that's i'm trying to just set a bar is all yeah. is all i'm trying to say i think it was just more of a, a my my understanding is that it's your responsibility um and it's the, you know the tenant saying well it's my understanding it's yours so I, all i'm trying to do is highlight that it was brought to our attention and i just don't want to let it slip away if if the answer is it's the tenant then the answer is it's the tenant um based on my current understanding and again based on my lease i don't know i can't speak to anybody else's lease but based on my lease statutorily if uh, i was told you need you need to fix that hydraulic door my attorney's gonna get involved and say otherwise because i know what foot i'm standing on okay. so um like i said again just to try to have it on record so what would you like from me just to be transparent and clear <laughs> uh, at, the, at this point at this point, I think th just the agenda item so we can discuss um, right. may maybe if we could have some clarification from legal if there's multiple different copies of leases or type, you know, Inverness hangers have a different lease than Crystal Rivers or 
as far as I know, that they're, they are the same. If, if we can get a definitive answer on that, then I think that that would help yeah, because uh, I can provide a copy of my my lease as as example. Um, mm-hmm. If if we're if we know that my lease was um, was the standard and everybody's on the same lease, then I think we can speak right. to. I, and I think to, and, and and I think what we need from you is just we want to be sure of our facts mm-hmm. when we sure. make a recommendation. And one of the the facts that I need, would like to be sure of is that the CPI index that we're using for determining hangar rents in Citrus County is the one for Tampa and St. Petersburg and not the one for Citrus County. That's something that came up in our last meeting and mm-hmm. I'd like to be sure that that's what's, what's actually going on. I, 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 would, I would request a copy of the report. I'll get a if, copy if, and if I can, can say that it was used. Okay. Yeah. I've and, seen it. Um, like I said, I guess I didn't bring my big packet of notes, but, yeah. um, but yes. Okay. This was before my time. Sure. And there was sure. something that people, some, some were forgetting that before that index came out, um, I don't remember exactly how many years, mm-hmm. but there was no increase according to this. Mm-hmm. So this, when this came out, I can see where a 3% increase is probably a little large uh, than normal. And then it jumps to 8 point something and then 9 point something. So mm-hmm. it's over 20% in three years. Yeah. In so, the proposed it, leases that they uh, have, the land lease, they're using the CPIU, which is the urban uh, yes. CPI. Yes. Well, and, and having having an uncapped CPI is also atypical. Um, okay. And it, generally, there is you know up to a certain amount, or um, you know, either a flat fee or a percentage, whichever is less. Um, because if it goes up another ten percent, or another nine percent, or another eventually and i get i understand that these things have to be brought to market value but there's also compromise that people think people with planes are made of money and that isn't the, isn't the case also so i know just, I, I, i'm just bringing it to light i'm not trying to right. give anybody a hard time just you're not. um i i i, I don't even ha- i don't have a hanger anymore um but i would still go to bat for the gentleman that brought up the fact that his hanger rent has doubled in five years i don't think that that's fair either and i can't name i do leasing all day every day and i can't name another situation Publix doesn't do that. Benderson doesn't do that. And they're charging $22 a square foot premium stuff. And they still, they still don't do that. So I just, yeah. I think we've, we've begun a process of outpacing um, what the actual value is to our aviation community here. Well, I can say that a lot of these, uh, um, these questions that are being brought up, these uh, concerns, mm-hmm. that financial analysis is, yeah. is what I'm waiting for. Can't speak for anyone else, mm-hmm. sure. but that's what I'm waiting for. Perfect. All right, let, let me ask a question. With what you're saying there, we're waiting for that financial analysis, which mm-hmm. is not going to come in until next year? Yes. Okay. Rent so, increases are in December, so, I believe. So, I understand. Yeah. All right, so it's not going to come until next year. Uh, the gentleman that was here, uh, yeah. Obviously, he's having to replace uh, these mechanisms, uh, and uh, as, as as you've already been heard, that uh, there is a uh, uh, concern uh, of bodily injury uh, in the event one of these do default. Uh, was it the responsibility of the tenant? Was it the responsibility of the landlord? Mm-hmm. I, I'm just going to say from my perspective, uh, there's got to be a definitive timeline, and it cannot be next year. We, we, that, that's something that needs to be done like yesterday because uh, from now going forward, if it, in fact next year they say it was the responsibility of the county to take care of that, then my expectation is, that the county is going to reimburse everybody from from then back uh, to to take care of that financial obligation uh, if it can be defined and, and, and identified here currently recently I mean real time here uh, is it or is it not the tenant's responsibility to take the ownership of that I think the expectations that we need to be able to show to these tenants. Uh, no different than gentlemen that came last month is we are concerned with what you brought up and here's why we we've already pushed forward to get some definitive uh, responses 
uh, on the responsibility of that, uh, also the responsibility of what CPI we're using mm -hmm. so that uh, everyone is being uh, uh, given the same fair opportunity. Yeah, I think everything you're asking is reasonable. And you, you brought up uh, a safety concern. Right. And um, I'll see what I can find. Um, I'll make sure that this is a top priority. I appreciate okay, it. and then we'll, uh, we'll we'll kick this around at our, our have this as an agenda item. And if, if it's not too much trouble, Kev, you, you, you've made a number of references to a Florida statute. If you could bring the I'll citation. Bring yeah, mm -hmm. that'd sure. be perfect. Um, Andy, <laughs> well, yeah, with, with apologies, somehow or another, we managed to fly through the agenda, and we're actually at the tail end. Uh, we we, we kind of went a little off topic as we got into uh, our next item, which was um, board communication. So you, unfortunately, we weren't here for uh, where we had open to the public, but I'd like to extend that opportunity to you now since you're here. If that's all right with you folks? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Please do. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity and sorry for our tardiness. We got held up at the airport way longer than expected for something that we couldn't leave <laughs> until it was completed. So mm -hmm. we rushed as soon as we could. But uh, by now, I'm sure you've all heard. Oh, these are working. It's on. By now, you, I'm sure you guys have all heard that, um, you know, the uh, originally in 2017, the county put out an RFQ RFP uh, for the Inverness FBO. Some of you may remember that back in the day. Yep. Um, the airport had been run into the ground by the previous operator. And as such, um, there were no applicants other than Wright Rudder for uh, the RFP RFQ. The county had in, uh, very, had in place very high um, demands of the new FBO, uh, which is atypical. If you look at other types of leases, for example, with FBOs, um, you would normally have a requirement that you sell fuel and park airplanes. Uh, in our lease, uh, our lease, uh, for those of you who haven't reviewed it, uh, requires quite uh, quite a burden on Wright Rudder, which we're happy to do, uh, including having specific operational hours, uh, including having specific staff and, and things that are trained in specific manners. But above that and beyond that, they required uh, Part 61 and of Part 141 flight school. Uh, they required that, um, that we seek uh, additional types of business for aircraft maintenance. And uh, I presented to the Board of County Commissioners on Tuesday at their request a, uh, a summary of what Wright Rudder does and of that contract. Um, Wright Rudder did, was awarded that RFQ, RFP, as you are aware, and awarded a contract. That contract contemplated a 20-year term with five, uh, I'm sorry, four five-year renewals with no changes. Um, for the last six months, we've been working with the county to renew this lease. And it's come to the last minute where, uh, you know, the lease is due at the end of the month and the county still has not come forward with the lease uh, agreement as per the uh, contract requires, which is the um, uh, an additional five year term without modifications. What they've done instead is added uh, additional expense to our lease in the term in the, uh, of about twenty thousand dollars per year on an annual basis that our cost goes up. And so what we had uh, requested was something to make up for that. We didn't request that our rent get lowered. We didn't request anything that cost the county money because we understand the county has a budget. We wanted something that would offset, allow us to offset and be able for me to justify financially why we're getting charged $20,000 per year. Uh, on Tuesday, they decided rather than going with the five-year term, they want to uh, you know, penalize us with a two-year term, unfortunately. Um, it, I see this as, a, as, as a, a major step in the wrong direction for the county, uh, a major step in the wrong direction for the Board of County Commissioners, and I'm very personally offended, to be honest. Um, we employ 25 families, uh, many six-figure positions in the county, and I have three six-figure positions open right now. There's not a lot of employers in the county who can say the same things. I presented uh, the results of the FDOT study, and we know we've been over that here, but there were some differences in the 2017 data, which was 2019 and the 2022 data. Um, but one of the other differences is that Wright Rudder wasn't at the Inverness Airport in 2017 and we were in 2022. Um, and so even if you were to complete the studies in the same manner, you would see that the financial results are significantly different and we do provide a significant economic impact to the community. Um, 
with that in mind, I do believe that the board may change their mind at the next uh, meeting uh, to one and a half weeks from now. And with that, I'd like to ask for the support of this board, both in a written form and in your personal attendance, to show support that the county should honor their original agreement of five-year renewal term. If I may, uh, and, uh, real quick, when the RFQ went out, did the RFQ indicate that there would be five-year renewal terms, or was that something to be negotiated? So the, the, the county at that point in time, and you guys were here, was desperate for an FBO. Mm -hmm. We came in. And we said, we would love to be the FBO. Here's our experience. You had to have five years experience running an FBO. You had to have a 61 flight school. You had to have all these things. We were uniquely qualified. And I think you can very much say that we've meet, met and exceeded every single expectation that this board and the Board of County Commissioners has for Wright Rudder. Um, with the, to answer your question, sorry, the way it was pitched to us is as a 20 year lease because we've invested tens of millions of dollars into this business. And you're in real estate, Keith. Many of you have had businesses or been involved in businesses. You can't do that for a five-year lease. It doesn't make sense. And now our concern is when this next lease period is up, are we going to go through this process again where we're fighting for our lives? Uh, coming home from the meeting on Tuesday, I had to have an unfortunate team meeting with 25 families to let them know that they may have to relocate by the end of the month, potentially. Um, the county commissioners did not consider many, many variables when they voted uh, to, to dox us or to, to, to penalize us with, with uh, that type of a lease. Um, the fact that uh, I just presented, we, we won contracts with Florida Fish and Wildlife, Florida Highway Patrol. Our bid, we go through the RFQ, RFP process with the state at that level and have to submit that we have a lease. We, in order to maintain these contracts, we have to have a lease. By doing this, the county is jeopardizing our business with the state and our business with Mesa Airlines and our business with our existing customers. And they know this and it's an attack on our business, frankly. So that we could properly address or, 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 or help you out there, can you tell us, do you have a sense as to why the county commission wants to, to do this on a two-year basis and who's pushing it? Is it from, is it from staff? Was it from among the county commissioners? Who, where did that come from? So the original uh, demand for the increased expense is what caused this. Um, that was triggered either by a change in policy here at the county or a new person. I'm not entirely sure what that was triggered by. Um, county staff has said, oh, it's because you guys are involved in flight training. However, the contract clearly contemplates back when we signed it in 2017 or 18 that we were required to have flight training. So that was not a change. Mm -hmm. So what precipitated that change uh, was some business need. And again, I'm not fighting that. We'll pay the additional $20,000 a year in insurance that we're required to have so long as we can offset that with something of value so that we're not just paying $20,000 more per year. As it is, uh, Commissioner Kennard was kind enough to remind me that when we signed the contract, we ended up paying 40% more than the county requested specifically because we thought the county had requested too low of a rent from us. That is very unusual, um, but um, we're happy that we did because we want to provide, we want the airports to be economic centers of importance to the county and we wanted to provide our fair share. Uh, and so we will again pay for that extra $20,000 happily if there's something to offset it mm -hmm. rather than us voluntarily paying 40% more already going through the same CPI increases you guys are talking about uh, unnecessarily, I think, although it is spelled out in the contract that way in fairness to the county, and, uh, and then the, the $20,000. But we, we should have something to offset it. And my proposal was just a, a, a plot of land. There's 350 acres, roughly, at the Inverness Airport. If they leased us one acre, that's one 350th. Uh, and that would offset, in my opinion, the $20,000 on the annual basis. So I did, uh, I did, ask the board, um, and th uh, those of you who haven't watched the recording, I encourage you to do so because it was a bloodbath. Um, the, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, Andy, who spearheaded that in the, in the commission meeting, you think? Was it, was it just a free for all or did you have so somebody that was- Oh, I'm sorry, I, I remember what I was Go gonna ahead. say. So yeah, what sure. triggered them was I, I had come to, to at, at the request of staff, mm -hmm. uh, I put a presentation together. 
I pitched that, I put that presentation together, and then I was requested that I propose what we would like. What I mean by that is I, I think I've told this board before, but we've secured $5 million in private equity to build a, a, a corporate hangar to allow us to expand our operation and continue to add team members to the Wright Rudder Aviation team to create more six-figure jobs in the local economy. It is very difficult to secure $5 million in a line of credit for hangar where you don't own the land and you immediately turn over possession of the building to the county. You guys have been through this, you guys know it, it's very, very difficult. Nevertheless, I was successful in doing so. However, it took me five years. If some of you have been here longer, if you remember about two or three years ago, we did a study. There's all this talk about the study. We did a study to say, what is the, the land lease at airports? Uh, typically, how much is it? Because at the time, Citrus County was 46 cents or somewhere in there, I don't remember the exact number, and Marion County was 14 cents. So we were way off. The results of that study that we requested came back and the county changed the land lease to 17 cents or 20 cents, something that was reasonable, which made sense. Two hangars were built under those terms and the additional findings of that study at that time was that a 50 year lease was required to recoup that investment if you're looking to do it as an investment rather than a hobby project. Because of that, two hangars were built. Uh, if you recall, the Lambs built a hangar in Crystal River and Dr. Montgomery built a hangar in Inverness. Using that land lease as a template, which the Board of County Commissioners approved, I went to seek money with that contract as a template, which is to say 50 years to recoup your investment. Again, two people were able to build hangars under those conditions. The money that I have approval for is under those terms. If the terms change, that money evaporates. It's not my choice. That's the terms that I have with this private equity group. So I propose that I'd like to make a $5 million investment in the county with a corporate hangar, but I require a 50 year lease for that. It's clear that they don't want that. At this point in time, we're gonna take the $5 million elsewhere because it was so much work to get that line of credit. We need to build a corporate hangar now because we've already made commitments to this investor. It's clear the county does not welcome that investment. However, we still need our FBO five year lease, which per the terms of the existing contract should be um, renewed as it exists without that insurance, or if, if it's a requirement that we need that insurance, I'm asking for something to offset that additional expense from the commissioners. And what would that be? It could be, so one of my gravest concerns now is, maybe I was naive when we came here. Uh, we were sold on a 20 year, on a 20 year lease, which is why we invested. But the function of it is, it does need to be renewed every five years. And the first year it came up, the counties moved in to take advantage of that by increasing our costs. Now my concern is that every five years or every time our term is up for renewal, the same thing's gonna happen where the county comes up with some new demands that significantly modifies our business uh, in, in a tangible way. So one way is just longer than five years. But at this point, you know, they didn't even offer the five years. Um, they, they called it a vote of no confidence in the meeting and said, you guys don't deserve five years, you guys deserve two years. They specifically use the term, we don't want bad business in the county, we want good business in the county. And that's part of the reason I was extremely offended. And if you watch the video, I was very emotional on that day and I, I probably am now too, because uh, as an employer, we're proud to have some really good jobs here in Citrus County, but to be go and in, in, in a single day, to have to go to tell our staff that they may be in looking for jobs at the end of the month is the worst thing to do as an employer. And it, uh, is, is the 20, 20 grand only for insurance? It is for insurance. So it does not, just to clarify, it does not get paid as an additional funds to the county, but it makes our, their modification of the insurance mm -hmm. makes our costs go up by 20,000 on an annual basis. Okay. And, and, and what's that insurance for? Uh, I'll have to recall because our, as it exists, our current contract outlines like seven different types of insurance we have along with very high numbers uh, for liability and general liability and hangar keepers and all these things. Um, off the top of my head, I don't exactly remember. And Was it a new type of insurance they were requiring or just upping limits? I probably. honestly don't yeah, remember okay. off the okay. top. Maybe you can look that up, Shavana, real quick. Um, I, I don't know that off the top of my head. But in, independent of what the type is, it would cost us an additional 20000 per year. Now, I, I've read your lease, but it was a, a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you have, you don't have anything in writing from the county that they're going to offer you renewals? It's in the, it's in the contract. It, it is in the contract. Yes. And does it, so typically if there's a right of renewal, they, they will discuss and cap your increases. Um, if there's any a base rent, of course, this is base rent, base rent increases. And generally the terms don't change the renewal the, the renewals are basically you're taking the exact same lease. The terms don't change of the lease and you're just changing the dates. You're spot on with that. That is, that is, that is a very typical, I would be very interested to sit down with you and read that lease. Yeah. Uh, I welcome it. It, uh, that's exactly the point that I'm making is it calls for five years renewals as it is. You change the term, the CPI increases. I stay there feel like you may out. be dealing with somebody that is making an interpretation that is not well, it's a request that we add that in. And I can understand the business need for additional insurance. Maybe it is a wise thing to do. Again, I'll eat that cost if we can offset it with something else. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't the bother. The bother was and uh, I, I'm going from the five years to the two years with the additional 20000 and nothing offered in return. I mean, if they're fundamentally changing the terms of the renewals, that would be breach of contract. 101. Yeah. 101. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I didn't bring up... I have no desire to take this into a legal space whatsoever. I believe at the next meeting, we can get the county commissioners on board. I think uh, honestly and truthfully that uh, they, well, I, I know for a fact that they did not do their homework on this topic. And, and that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm not, I'm not insinuating yeah. that you would get an attorney and sue the county. It's just a matter of educating the folks that are saying, well, let's just change it to a two year. Well, you, 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 you kind of can't undo that. You kind of, you kind of can't do that. You can't just undo the existing lease. So, um, I, I'd be interested in sitting down with you and maybe if you have trouble with specific commissioners, let me know who those are. Cause if, if I don't, if I can't get in front of them, I know people that can Yeah. to well, just, just to educate them like, Hey, you, you know, you're, you're about to bite off more than you can chew. Absolutely. We urge each and every one of you to meet individually with the commissioners, of course, because of the sunshine laws. Yep. Uh, but then also to attend the meeting and speak in person. Uh, you know, the, I think they didn't do their homework. I think they didn't do any research. And they also didn't listen to the presentation. It's very clear, unfortunately. Um, it's clear that the commissioners uh, came into that meeting with an agenda in mind, independent of what I was going to say or what the community had to say. Um, and, and to take actions without thoughts of recourse. Uh, up to what their actions may, may, may do. You, you made a specific request uh, to, that the Aviation Advisory Board uh, support uh, the, um, the notion of uh, replace, replacing the lease uh, for another five years uh, at the, with the same terms. Um, and I guess uh, I'm, I'm interested in how we, uh, how we might do that. We would have to, we would have to take a vote yeah, that's right. and yeah. send a letter or some communication to the commission. Yeah. And then if we felt strongly enough, we thought it was important enough, it means we also need to show up. Um, when is the, uh, what is your, the, the next board, when does this come up again with the board of county? Commission? Two weeks from Tuesday, from this past this Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So time is and up. And 22nd yet. of August, I believe. 22nd of August. All right. Um, Let's 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 open this topic for discussion amongst yourselves. Okay. Um, all right, uh, how do you all feel about this? Do we wish to um, go ahead? Uh, here's here's how, how I see it. Okay, so we've got someone that's an FBO operator that has performed the the functions and responsibilities with the proper credentials for the last five years. Uh, uh, of which appears there have been no issues or concerns up to this point. So no different than what Keith has already shared is nothing's changed. Things have improved, enhanced. Uh, the rationale would be it's another five year lease. It's another five year lease and, and you sign it, date it, and move on to the next. The, the, the biggest part that, that I have great concern with is a part of our aviation is to build and bolster that which we have with added infrastructure and opportunity for economic growth for Citrus County, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So if we've got a gentleman that has someone that's willing to uh, uh, step up, uh, he's got five million to build two hangars, uh, and it's all business uh, sense related, and there's economic certainties that need to take place and to have uh, an amortization any shorter than which is needed to break even or to reach profitability, uh, uh, we need to embrace uh, because that's going to bring the additional growth for Citrus County in a multitude of directions. Uh, first of all, people are going to come. They're going to need a home. Uh, they're going to live, breathe, and spend their time here. Uh, so their ancillary benefits to all around Citrus County that could be beneficial to all concerned. Uh, that this would be an endeavor that we would want to support because of the economic factor and the fact that Citrus County is, is in a, an economic growth mode at this time. I, I think it's I think it's simple. We're not asking anybody to reinvent the wheel. We're asking the county. We're asking the commission to honor what they told Andy they would do, especially if it's legal and in writing. It is. Um, the, all it needs to say is, <laughs> please follow the contract you guys created. By the way, I didn't create it. Right. And signed. And um, fundamentally, from an investment standpoint. Um, you're only five years into this ag agreement and I'm an entrepreneur. Five years is not enough time to recoup your investment, period. Um, and to I, I, honest, a two year lease would, if I were you, I wouldn't put another dollar in that business with the uncertainty that I don't have time to recoup my investment. That's correct. The and, economic statement they told us is to start shutting down our business because Stop investing and, sh and start shutting down. Yeah, just business. let it stagnate like it did before. That that's the message that the commissioner sent to me, as far as I'm concerned. In in so many words, or or did they specifically say that? Well, uh, in so many words, by having a contract in writing that says a five year renewal, and then saying we're not going to do what we what we committed to, and we're going to slap you in the face with a two year a two year lease. I'm not gonna, I wouldn't make a single penny more of investment. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And we're not gonna, I just hired four people last week. We would stop hiring, right? You know, we have, I, t I didn't even give you all the updates. You know, with Mesa, we just got another seven more airplanes. So we're running 17 airplanes for them at that, which if you do the math on times four, I don't know, it's, it's something like 60 cadets that are from out of the town that are here flying every day, spending their money, you know, here. Mm -hmm. County gets fuel flow off that. You know, um, county gets all the taxes that they're paying, and, and well, of course, the county doesn't, but the state gets sales tax anyways. And, right. Uh, the economic impact every night they're at coaches. You know, they're yeah. They're kids. You know, yeah. so they're they're out there spending their money, uh, getting to know the area, and a lot of them are actually really liking the area and falling in love with it and bringing their families here on vacation while they're here. Okay. Uh, many of them go see the manatees and you know do all the stuff that people do while they're in Citrus County. Okay. If, if I may ask, okay, so. You went for the county commission because this was a an RFQ process, correct? Uh, or was no, this, no, no, it's an extension. extension. It's, it's just a renewal of the existing lease is what it was meant to be. Uh, okay. What we were told was at this meeting we were to provide the presentation of what Wright Rudder has been asked to do in terms of the contract and how Wright Rudder has met or exceeded those expectations. Okay. And I went into a detailed report about that. And then... Uh, when we showed up, it was clear that they wanted to talk about the lease. So that was kind of sprung on us at the last minute. Originally, it was presented to us that at the next meeting is when the lease would be discussed. So they kind of threw it in there, surprised us, and changed the topic from what was originally intended. And isn't there a minimum deadline for them providing you a new lease? I'm going to guess somewhere around 60 to 90 days. It, if they weren't going to renew it or, I mean, typically it's th that that lease would have to be delivered to you within. I'd month. have to look at the detailed uh, details of it. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm going to, if you have a copy of it, yeah. if you could email Absolutely. it to me, if not, I'll dig one up, but I'm going to reread it. Yeah. Um, Cause I think you may have some minimum it's, standards there that were, were notifying you of any changes at the lease would have to occur. 
uh, usually within a certain deadline prior to the expiration. So the, the, the whole thing may be moot. It's, it's honestly not a very well-written contract. <laughs> Uh, again, the county put it together, so it's, 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 it's consistent a lot of gaps with the rest of the leases, I'm sure. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of gaps in it. So you would expect a traditional, you know, lease to have that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's there. Yeah. However, we have been working for about six months to renew this lease. Um, at the time, of course, there was a lot of change. All the board members were new. They said, well, let's hold off. We've got to get to know how to, how to conduct a county commissioner meeting. Uh, county administrators knew. County Economic Development Director is new. Our airport liaison is new. So everyone was new. So they said, well, hold on. We're all new. We have to ho- we have to hold off a little bit. Have you talked to Steve Howard about this? That's cor- yes, correct. Yeah. You said a little earlier that you expected uh, in the next County Commission meeting that people will have done their homework and, and understand uh, the uh, background for the existing lease and the obligation to renew it in accordance with that lease um do you do you, how much confidence do you have in that i mean it's a it's a, it's a wild card i guess i mean we know there's five commissioners and they, they have their votes um what i mean by that is this is we're being threatened that we may be evicted at the end of the month so, you know we have 25 families on the line right I now i can't see that happening no that's what it's they're the the, yeah. they, they're yeah. refusing to honor the contract they signed, which calls for the five year renewal. And they're trying to strong arm me with very little time left right. uh, in a concerted effort to sign a two year lease instead of a five year lease. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and, and uh, it's bullying as far as I'm concerned. Independent of this board, I would very much like to help you in your battle. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, to answer the question, I am, uh, uh, of course, talking to various media sources. You know, Florida Politics did an article on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition to uh, the Chronicle, um, we're working with other media sources to get their word out. I mean, if this is how the county approaches that welcome, come, come, you know, be the FBO, invest your millions. And then, you know, we're, you know, we're not going to honor our end of the contract for that. I mean, that's very bad and poor form in, in my opinion. We have this business park we just broke ground on. Um, the plan for the business park, if you were to ask any commissioner, probably none of them know, but is to get it site ready. Is that correct? Is the county planning to build buildings at this point in time? Right now? At any point in time. Is it in the plan for the county to actually build the, the structures in the business That's park? the questions I asked. Yeah. <laughs> for the uh, what's the project management and what is the uh, you know what's going on where it's going to happen what is the who's going to own the buildings so if they are doing it who is going to uh, is it going to be made by them what's the infrastructure that's that's why I asked about the uh, earlier about the uh, plans I, I have the money. answer the answer it, is no the county does not have any plans to build the building at all the, the plan is to make it pad ready the plan was to have people invest and build buildings. But they're not off to a great start. I'm trying to invest and build a building. Yeah. $5 million mm-hmm. I brought to the table, and it's clear that they don't want private investment. So as far as I see it, this is telling any potential suitors, by the way, who we have hosted over 30 different companies who have come to look at the business park. If, they don't, if the county is not welcoming the investment and the county is not going to build the buildings, what is the business park? Mm-hmm. It's a piece of land that's empty. Mm-hmm. It's worthless. It's useless. Um, and so I don't see a point in, co- in continuing the business park if there's not a plan to build buildings and the county says no to outside investment. And we didn't even talk about any of the other terms of, of ground lease space or how many jobs I could create out of an additional $5 million facility. I was just flabbergasted because what is the point of the business park then? There is none. It's yeah. totally pointless. They're not going to get any tenant to build a building for yeah. ten, five for year two leases. years. No, yeah. a two, I mean, two year lease on a five million dollar investment. No, even on a five year, they're they're not going to they're they're not going to get any tenants in that business park. It's going to take twenty five years to as minimum a, as to a break minimum. even. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and even. if you want to make a profit, you have to have the fifty years. So, it's as far as if this is the attitude that the county has and the commissioners have, then. We might as well just go back to, you know, not having a working fuel farm at the Inverness Airport. I suppose it's it's going backwards. 
I, um, I, I'm probably just saying the same things okay. over and over again, but I'm very passionate about this. Sure, this. but rightly so. Um, if I can ask, um, in comparing your lease to the one over at Crystal River, you, uh, if, I can, if, if, if I may ask you, is your lease structured in a similar manner? It's good for 20 years, five-year renewals? Yes, sir. And when was the last time you went through renewal? Last year. Last year, okay. And um, did they give you a five-year renewal as the way it went? Yes. Okay. Did did the Crystal River Airport also receive? Did did you guys also uh, were you required to up your insurance as Andy? But yeah, I figured that would be the case. It, it, our lease might be different. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it has to be looked at before renewal and the times are laid out properly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Todd, would would you have any information? Was there a staff recommendation that went with this? For <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly? Uh, for, for the renewal of his lease. Did can you, can uh, I answer that? Okay. Well, no, no, well I'd like to I'll, I'll, I'll let you both answer it. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Uh, okay. So the commissioners directly asked staff, uh, both uh, Steve Howard and um, Frank Calcion, what their recommendations were. And their recommendations were to renew the five-year lease as, in, as is in the contract. Okay. In fairness to staff. And the commissioner said... Can you tell me again what your recommendation is? And then they said, we recommend you follow the contract and renew with the five-year lease. And then they said, we're not going to do that. Okay, so... so again, I, I urge you to watch the video because it is recorded. Yeah, well, I guess I, I, I got the answer to my question originally. Uh, I think we probably need to, to, to have a resolution. Uh, oh, I agree, yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just trying to and I, get the I, whole <clears throat> sense of... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one thing, the one thing I still don't understand is where they got this burr under their saddle. Uh, is uh, you want to hear the other side of the story? Huh? Well, it, that's, just so that's that you, why I just so that you can watch counter, the video. Just so that you can counter the narrative uh, is is where, where where are they coming from? The one thing they said, which is what you're going to yeah. say, is that we have this study now. We don't want to do anything until we have this study. Yeah. That was what their their excuse is. And I'm like, okay, so what do I tell my families that are employed <clears throat> that we're just not going to pay you until the study comes out, that you're laid off? And that, like, they're, they're hinging everything on the study. But guess what? The study is done by experts. They have an expert on economic development. They have an expert on yeah. administrating the county, and they disregarded that expert. So what is the study going to do? Independent of what the results are, they're just going to take it and they're going to say, that's the study. It doesn't matter because they already have the results of an independent expert. Frank Calcione is very good at economic development, and he was thinking in the county's best interest when he answered that question. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I'd like to suggest that the, uh, I, and I'll put this as a motion if people agree, but I'd like to, to say that we should write a letter and, and, uh, and recommend to the county commission that they renew the Inverness lease in accordance with the agreements uh, reached in 2017. And the and as documented in the current lease. Yeah, I, I I'd love love to move forward. That you you had some comments. I'd love to hear from you. I was just gonna say that their response or or what everyone is waiting on, which is seemingly the response to every question about the airports right now, is the study. Um, but as we've seen, you know, a lot of the numbers that you know the ground lease is being at forty six cents. When we came here, you know. I specifically asked the question to the county to look at where this number came from, and it came from an expert. And then it was determined that the, this doesn't make any sense for here. So the expert may provide some information and guidance, but a lot of times it just creates more questions, which takes more time to get any of this done. So they say we'll be waiting six months for the report, and then they want to maybe renegotiate. But it won't be just six months. It'll be a year. It'll be two years before there's a real plan still. So we can't be on hold. Um, the real, the only answer is that they want to wait for the experts' response because maybe they should be getting more money. Can I speak? You please do. Um, just a few things that were mentioned. For an FBO and a number of people who work at the FBO, that is common, um, and having roles defined is common. When you have a five thousand square, uh, five thousand foot runway, you need to have a security plan. And you need to have people that are designed and qualified to run an FBO. Um, and that should be outlined. So that's not uncommon. Um, okay. Hours of operation, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's 72. The, the uncommon part I was referring to is requiring that a FBO have seven. Uh, 
Uh, as FPO has what? Sevis. Okay. Um, that is uh, a particularly unusual and uncommon requirement that costs a lot of money, almost $100,000. Um, so that is very unusual. I urge you to research that. Sure. Yeah, which we, we were required to do by um, a certain time and only if not for the COVID, you know, pandemic, uh, we would have done in that time frame. But yeah, it cost us a significant amount. And then by the time we just got it this year, now we <laughs> may not may not even be here. How do you, so, how do you smell that? It's um, Sevis, S E V I S. Okay, it's okay. the it's the part one forty one in the in the contract. It'll say one forty one flight school. Okay. Um, but also the same as uh, you know, requiring certain maintenance. You know, seek other business to bring to the to the airport. Things like okay. that are in there as well. Okay. I'll look that up. Hours of operation? No, that, that's not unusual. The main thing is that we had to get service at a cost of several hundred thousand dollars. Okay. For a 141 in addition to service, which we would not have done, uh, except that it was required by our contracts. Which, again, most FBO leases would have that. Yeah, yeah. if you're going to talk. Yeah. Most FBO leases wouldn't require uh, an FBO to have a 141, which is one of the reasons there were not very many, there were no other applicants. If you take a traditional FBO, what do you think of Atlantic, Signature, uh, right. other places like that? None of them have 141 schools and they would not have qualified uh, to do what we do. Okay. Um, so that was a very unusual request and that we happened to meet because we also are a flight school, but um, we wouldn't have spent $100,000 for 141 in service, except that it was contractually required by the county. Okay. Uh, land lease is 17 cents. Um, again, I've only been here for a few months, but you're, you're saying that it used to be 46? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, I'll look into that as well. Um, I, I find it hard to believe, but I'll, I'll take a look at that as well, see if, what it was in the past. It was, um, and then it, the study was conducted, and it came down to a reasonable rate at that point in time. It made sense, and like I okay. said, two hangars were built there. Okay. Um, specifically during uh, yesterday's meeting, I did watch that. I don't. I didn't hear anyone say that this was for a vote of no confidence. That's you can. Message. It's recorded, so you can watch it again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and the 50-year lease thing, what I can tell you is that I know the FAA has a hard time with a 50-year lease. And the main reason is because of building um, um, degradation. Mm -hmm. And that's the big part is that if you have a new building built 50 years ago, and by the time a county or city yeah. anyone takes it over, you're, you're taking over a 50-year-old building. Even the accounting uh, systems under GASB 34 or uh, the IRS, a commercial building which a uh, hangar is considered, mm -hmm. is 39 years. Okay, that's that's what it's uh, listed as, as being uh, the end of the uh, lifespan. And the experience or, or research that I've been doing so far when it comes to leases like that for FBOs, or it can be, any, be anywhere from 20 to 30 years. Yeah. There are some other ones out there here and there. Um, I can't speak for that, but what I can tell you is that the norm seems to be around that time frame. Um, I can also bring you examples where there's 99-year ground leases. For sure, if you're talking about um, the flea market off of Spring Hill that Brooksville has, I, who knows? I can't speak on that. The things that happened in the past, I can't speak on. But from what so far what I'm looking at, I can. Um, and the last thing I want to bring up is the county did send you an email six weeks ago with a five-year lease. Uh, the county did, and Steve Howard said that he wasn't aware that that was sent, that that was triggered without his uh, intervention, and that was unintentional. Um, because that did not include, as we discussed, the compensation uh, or an offset for the additional expense. I think there's three different issues combined into one, is which there's signing of, of a five-year lease, you're bringing up a 50-year lease, and then they're in insurance. And I think combining at all was a little confusing for me. So. Okay. So I'm taking the $5 million off the table because it's clear no one wants us to invest. However, we just want the five year without the additional $20,000 expense or something to offset 
the, the extra $20,000. I mean, if, if any one of us here was asked to pay $20,000 extra for something and you don't get anything in return, how can you justify that? Double, and devil's advocate on that one because my homeowner's insurance just doubled again. Yeah. Um, my car insurance just went up by about 30%. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, so, so and again, I'm, I'm not trying to um, put one across your bow here at all. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying um, I, it, it may just be me not knowing enough about the situation, but I just can't see asking the county to subsidize your insurance i'm not so in this example let's say you have car insurance right sure. my car insurance goes up just like everyone else's yep that's fine we're required to have car insurance i'm pretty sure it was another type of insurance okay and the justification was oh you guys are a flight school now right they knew we were a flight school when we signed the original contract because they contractually required us to be a flight school and they notoriously required redundant indemnification um exactly yeah uh no, I, I guess so that. our rates have gone up and i'm not complaining about that because yep. that's not on the county we've maintained all those types of insurances and our rates are going up every single year and that's part of doing business but to request another type of insurance is uh that was not originally contemplated i was just asking for something yeah and, and i'd like to know what that is because if it's coverage on the building or something like that that yeah, would we'll, we'll find that that out, would potentially make sense also because the cost of replacement's gone up. I mean, th there are situations where I could see that that would make sense for the insurance coverage that be required, um, you know, to be more expensive. But there are situations I can imagine where they're just saying, I, wh what's the what's the insurance? I think million dollars or something like that on your vehicle mm -hmm. now to, to, oh, to rent a hangar at one of the airports. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could put $500,000 in the trunk of my car and light it on fire and <laughs> it wouldn't cause a million dollars worth of damage. I mean, um, yes, yeah. but, <laughs> but, but, um, uh, so I, I get what you're saying. I guess that, that, the type of, it, uh, what's required that the, the, that's causing the increase would probably make or break that too. Yeah. And we, we can look at that and, sure. it, you know, Sorry, I, I also, I just want to say that, um, we expected just the renewal of the terms that existed, no modification to the lease. That's what I and anticipate so also. when it came up. We said, well, then if, if this seems like a renegotiation of the lease, mm -hmm. uh, of the terms, there's new terms, so let's look at it. Um, we spoke with staff, specifically uh, Frank, who said, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I could see that. You know, you're a partner and, you know, we're, we do business together. If we're asking you to increase, maybe there's something that we can give up that doesn't cost the county anything. Mm -hmm. It was it was a reasonable conversation. Mm -hmm. If we had been told that's just the cost. No, don't even, you know, don't even ask. We were, right. we were suggested to present this. Right. And in my opinion, and if you watch, it looked like we offended them by, you know, it, they could say, okay, we're not open to that, but how about this? Or we're not open to that. And then we'd say, okay, we'll just go with the five year. But then it seemed like they were offended and then tried to penalize us. That, that is the read I got. And when you watch it, maybe you'll think hmm. something different, but yeah. We, it was suggested that we present it this way. Otherwise, if they said, yeah, you're crazy, you know, th that's not going to happen. We would just say, okay, well, we have to take it or leave it. Um, but we presented as we were, you know, suggested to do. And then I think maybe it, infl I don't know, maybe it upset them or something. But I also don't think that if we had asked for a 39-year lease on the hangar, I don't, the, the commission seemed like they were not open to anything long-term whatsoever at all. So even if it wasn't 50 years, uh, I, they didn't say, well, what about 10 or what about 20? It, it wasn't that. It was absolutely not. And because you asked that, actually, let's make it two years. Mr. McDonald. Yes. May I back us up just a little? Sure. Um, did we have a motion on the table? Because I... <laughs> uh, we, we were about we, to, we, but we, yeah. we, we haven't. We've had a suggestion okay. uh, to, to do so, but it hasn't become a motion yet. Okay, I just We're still wanted to make sure. We're still kind of kicking it around. I'm going. I am going to call for the motion, though. Okay, Thank I just you. wanted to to clarify uh, for myself. We appreciate it. Sorry. Yeah. No, okay. that, that's all. So, um, yeah, I just want to say that we weren't, and also we didn't pull this 50-year number out of the air. It was that. You know, the last two lease, the last two buildings that were built on county airports were 50-year leases. That, that's all. So we weren't just, you know, making up a number. Uh, we based it off of that. And that also was what was presented to us to take to mm -hmm. find investment because the county said, we're not building any hangars. And, you know, we've been waiting years. So we said, we'll do it ourselves. 
and well now we're able to but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen so mm -hmm. and, and i agree i think we have three separate issues that we're dealing with and i think we need to be careful what we're um putting our support we need to d delineate between the three issues what we're Putting yeah, and what we're asking for support now, just to be clear, is for what the, what the, is contemplated in the lease, which the, is the five-year renewal. Yeah. The yeah, the county, yeah, yeah they were not going to be open to anything that would, you know, allow us to or investors to recoup their investment. So that's just not happening. The mm -hmm. county is just not interested. I think so. Uh, we're just concerned now about for now our, we have our, 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 yeah now. Our, our business yeah yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before I call for the uh, uh, for a motion on this, I uh, just want to quickly review how we've done board communication in the past. Basically, um, um, the way we've done it in the past is uh, we've, we've agreed and had a motion to second and then voted that we should communicate something to the board, whatever the topic was, and then one amongst us would then uh, draft it, the communication, um, which would be done after the meeting. And then in accordance with Sunshine Law, we would send it to Todd, and Todd would then distribute it to everyone else for comment or whatever. And then it would go back, and then a final version of the communication would be, would be made. It would then go back to you, Todd, or Quincy, it used to be Quincy, and then you would then forward it to the members of the Board of County Commissioners. And that, that's how we've done it in the past. Uh, does that, that still work for you guys? With the exception of the time constraint. With the exception of the time constraint. Because right, if, got, if they're got, voting on it again in, in less two than weeks. two weeks, yeah, we don't have enough time to, to draft it and get it back to all of us for review well, unless we do it electronically. Oh, oh that's exactly how we yeah, would do okay. it electronically. Yeah, there's no other way. Um, you see any, any reservations, Todd, with doing it that way? I don't. Um, but I, I believe if you want to get something on the August 22nd agenda, there's a deadline. I can't remember the exact number. No, I think it's before that. <laughs> well, in that case, we're I can't speak on that date. <laughs> Could we Can just turn around and, uh, vote on it, put it in the minutes and then have it, uh, transmitted that way? It need, it's something like this needs to be more significant and pronounced. Uh, they may or may not see the minutes until whenever or read it. And if it's just a footnote, it's not. I, I don't think it'll carry as much weight I agree as if that. it's, yeah. yeah. He's so, already on the 22nd agenda? What's that? Right Rudder is already on the 22nd Oh, yes, agenda. yes, yes. But I'm talking about. If that's the case, can we give the letter to Andy, a letter of support to Andy that he can bring with him to the meeting? Uh, mm-hmm. You, 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 you could, but the impact's going to be from someone in the advisory yeah, our, board our, to uh, what do you call yeah, it? to step right. up and do the presentation uh, on behalf of the advisory right. board. Right. Our job is to advise the county commission, and mm -hmm. and that's where our communication has to, to go. Yeah. I mean, we certainly provide Andy with a copy of it, of course, but uh, as a public document. But our communication, I think, needs to go to the board of county commissioners. Understood. Okay, and you could so do that we got we got to do this by tomorrow. No, sir. No, you, we you, don't. That is that is so. Okay. His lease is already on the August twenty second agenda. So if you would like to provide a letter in support, you may do so um, for either Tati email as you previously discussed, or for okay. Andy to hand in in person because I'm I believe he's probably going to speak on his item because there is a open to the public section for each agenda item okay. um, if someone from the board wants to be mm -hmm. there yeah. then you would have an opportunity as well to speak at the open to the public on that particular agenda item okay excellent all right then uh well then at this point i need to um um formal call for a motion to um uh, someone want, would like to make a motion on this topic uh, we'll need a second. We'll need a brief discussion of, about how it should be worded and then who's going to write it and um, uh, and then make it happen. So uh, I'll give down some wording and I'll, I'll make the motion. <laughs> okay. And, and your motion we, is, for the record? And, and, and this is uh, a straw man, I guess, at this point. Okay. Uh, I, think I recommend that, uh, <clears throat> that the uh, 
Aviation Advisory Board uh, recommend to the county commission that they renew the Inverness lease in accordance with the agreements reached back in 2017 and as documented in the current lease. Second. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? No. Uh, if I may ask, uh, could I ask you, 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 you said that quite well. Would you like to volunteer to write that? Uh, yes, I, I will. Okay. And then um, our chairman, I guess, is out. Do we know when he's going to be back? Is there anything we know about when he's going to be back? I think he will be back tomorrow. Yeah, we'll back tomorrow. Yeah, he, he's just out of town for the day. I yeah. Think. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, very I wasn't. Well. Um, I, I talked to him yesterday. All right. Well, we can set it up. Um, if if uh, I normally would have the chairman sign it if he's not available, you know, if, if we could draft it, send it out to um, Todd, um, and if Todd can, you can send it to, to Heiko uh, and ask if he can sign it for it. If he if you. If that doesn't work out, I'll be happy to sign it on behalf of the, the whatever sure. what occurs here. Yeah, so, so what I need to do? Oh, so <laughs> write a letter and send it to him. I got gotcha. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, Exactly. Okay. So we've had uh, we've had a, a motion and a second. I think we're concluded with discussion. I'd like to call for a vote on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, got some homework to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And we thought it was going to be early. Well, I, it, was looking, it, was looking, it was looking pretty good until you showed up. <laughs> Can I give other updates unrelated to this topic? This of course, yes, yes. So just as an FYI, um, if you uh, recall several years ago, um, there was a, a company that uh, brought an airplane to the Inverness Airport uh, to disassemble it. And kind of left it there and right. then it, it was a whole thing. Um, we started cutting that up to remove that from the property. Um, so for those of you who have been by, you see it's going away piece by piece. Same thing with the steel, steel door, Todd. Um, hmm. Those have both been annoying at the airport and uh, those things didn't work out. So those will be removed very, very shortly. Actually, the vast majority of the door is gone. That's just a lot of door removed and uh, a lot of the aircraft is gone as well. So that's getting cleaned up. Um, new parking lot is amazing. Uh, thank you, Todd, for making that project happen. Um, sure. It, uh, it was definitely needed if you swing by the airport. At any time when we're open, you'll see our parking lot is absolutely full, both of them. Um, so we desperately needed that. And then it's now clear that we could actually use more parking in the future. Um, uh, things are going really, really well with the Hertz rental locations at our airport. Um, rental. What, you've got a Hertz location now? Yep. Yeah, we, we were a Hertz location pre-COVID, then they declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy and restructured during COVID, and they pulled all their cars out of FBOs. Um, and then for about six months or a year now, we've recruited them back, so we're able to rent church cars out, which is tremendously... Uh, oh, my God, yeah. I always thought the most important job of an FBO was to make the connection from the runway to the highway. It's oh, the yes. Most, most critical thing I decide when I go travel. Yeah, and we've had a crew car for about a year or two yeah. now as well. Well, it's a 2022. I think we got a 21 yeah. maybe. So we've had a crew car, you know, two-hour usage for people who fly in, and then we have the rental cars for long-term people. Uh, the um, partnership with the, the new hotel, is it State Bridge Suites, I think, uh, over by the, uh, the hospitals working out well. We send a lot of people there. Um, so FBO is running very, very smoothly right now. And again, we did just get seven additional more planes for a total of 17 planes that were operating for Mesa Airlines. Uh, come by and meet meet the folks flying. They're uh, they're good people. A lot of young people getting into their careers and things like that. Um, but uh, like I said, a lot of them were bringing their families out to the area and seeing the sites. It's really kind of a lot of exciting things going on at the airport right now. Um, we've already done, uh, we, we only a couple months ago uh, won the contract for Florida Highway Patrol and Florida Fish and Wildlife Maintenance. Uh, already done uh, contract work for both of those. There's an FWC plane in our hangar right now actually getting an annual inspection done. Um, so it looks like that's going to be a great partnership moving forward. Uh, in addition, they are buying fuel from us now, whereas they didn't before. So long term, we'd like for them to base at the Inverness Airport, assuming we work out all these contractual issues. Um, and there's a strong possibility for that because of the geographic location of Inverness is quite quite good for what they're looking to do since it's this geographic center of the state. Um, 
so yeah, everything everything's going pretty well at the airport. It's uh, other than that, we did get struck by lightning. The uh, taxi relays are out, so <laughs> that's unfortunate. But that's getting worked on. So yeah. mm. one, one quick question: It's, it's not anywhere here. You have the Propistro Alpha. You have the elect. You have the electric uh, vehicles with the uh, I. Uh, Lithium iron uh, ion batteries. So have you we, got any policies for how you uh, going to take care of those because of the the problems? So uh, in the flight training world, you can't use electric aircraft yet because the FAA doesn't know how to certify them. Um, we have had a number of electric aircraft uh, through our facility, but we don't use any of them for uh, the, the the flight school because you can't legally do so. So we don't have any that we own or operate. There's still some that we maintain on behalf of clients. So you will see them from time to time, but we don't directly own any of the electric aircraft at this point in time. For, uh, um, but to answer your question, there is a specific, so the everything in aviation has time limits. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, you can imagine that the battery packs, um, you know, it's a 2000 hour TBO basically, but uh, there was a life cycle plan for that to answer the question overall though. Uh, you pull the battery packs out, they disassemble them, and then they actually repurpose the batteries right. primarily for like a power wall storage or something like that. So they wouldn't be aircraft grade after that, but they'd still have a useful life beyond uh, when they're not useful in the aviation because world. Most of the, uh, there's a large number of uh, aircraft companies that are starting to build them with the, uh, and that's why I'm wondering, because if we bring this back in into the uh, FBOs, what kind of issues are we gonna have? No, absolutely. But the, the, recycling, the recycling is getting much more robust than it was in the past. Uh, again, these are very, very high dollar batteries mm -hmm. compared to like a car because yeah. they're aviation batteries. So it's not like anyone's just tossing them out because they're tremendously valuable. <laughs> yeah. A historical footnote, the, and you can correct me if I don't say this quite right, the first check ride in the United States in an electric airplane was at Inverness Airport. Mm. They, they brought in two electric aircraft, and then uh, they had buyers for them. And then uh, the first one to be checked out in it to, to fly was was here at here Little Old Inverness Airport. Yep, and actually since that time, we've had some journalists scour, and we now believe that it was the first, he was the first person to earn a pilot certificate in the world in an electric airplane. Oh, mm. wow. Um, <laughs> we wanted to be careful with that because we wanted some research, and I still sure. don't know 100% because, but anyways, yeah. as far as we can tell, that is uh, still, that is true. All right. Um, all right, well, let's see. Our next meeting uh, is scheduled for September 14th, 2 p.m. here. Um, before I call for the motion to adjourn, is there any, any other issue that we need to touch on or you'd like to comment on? Okay, then I'd like to call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, thanks, folks.